Something big is cooking with LangGraph, and it's called a LangGraph Cloud by LangChain. And it's currently in alpha version, so this means it's only open for a selected group of customers. And its value proposition is that it takes our compiled LangGraph graph and it deploys it and gives us back a microservice that we can interact with. And this means that we are shifting all of the work of the deployment and the CI CD and handling all the abilities, availability, durability, scalability that we need to handle in a production application. So we are switching all of this responsibility to LangChain and all we are left to do is to implement the business logic and the core logic of our LangGraph graph and LangChain handles the rest. And in my opinion, this value proposition tackles a lot of pain points we have when we develop an LLM application. Because when we develop a LangChain application or a LangGraph graph, then developing it with our business logic is only the first step. We need to write a REST API to expose our service. We need to maybe to create a Docker file and then to deploy it in container service like Google Cloud GKE, AWS EKS, or if you want to go totally uh, serverless, then we'll use something like Google Cloud Run. And we also want to handle persistence. So most likely in our LangGraph graph, we want to checkpoint our state and we want to maybe rewind or to have a look in our logging systems, what happened at every given point of time. So we have the checkpoints object, which is actually performing it. But the checkpoint is being checkpointed into a persistent storage. So we need to set up maybe a MySQL database or a Postgres DB, but we need to manage it. So yes, we can go and use cloud services like Supabase or even to use Google Cloud Cloud SQL or, or AWS RDS, but we would need to manage this database ourselves. But with the LangGraph Cloud, LangChain handles everything out of the box, including persistence, which is very convenient. So we as developers are left with only developing the core business logic of our application, of our LangGraph Graph, and LangChain handles everything else for us. Now, I also find this solution very compelling because LangChain knows which endpoints we need to develop in order to make our microservice useful. So all the endpoints of invoke stream, a invoke, a stream. So all of those are coming out of the bat because LangChain is handling the writing of our API web server. Of course, if you want, we can customize it and add our own logic, but basically a lot of core components that we would need in our API, LangChain is developing for us. Now, all of this is coming with a built-in integration with LangSmith. So we basically have here an entire suite for our production graph. We have here the first part of the deployment and the second part of our tracing and monitoring, which is a very strong use case and it's a very compelling service. I think it's particularly compelling because a lot of LLM application developers actually come from the data science world and deploying an application to production that is not something they're used to do and it's something new. So it saves a lot of work for them. Now, I don't mind doing this because I'm a backend engineer and I'm used to, to writing the Docker files, the REST APIs and handling the CI, CD and deployment. And I don't mind getting my hands dirty. But what it does actually, it's shifting my focus in the deployment part instead of focusing my focus in the LLM application development and the business logic that I want to implement. So that's why I think the use case here is very compelling. All right, let's go to the LangGraph Cloud documentation and have a walkthrough of what we're being offered here. All righty, so I'm in the LangGraph official documentation. We have here LangGraph Cloud, which is on alpha. And here we can see the value proposition, which we already discussed. Now, if we'll go to the conceptual guides, then we can see all the objects we can now interact with. So we have assistants, threads, runs, and it really reminds us of OpenAI assistants. By the way, the, here is a question I ask, and I got an answer within like six minutes. It was very impressive. All right, let's go to tutorials and to the quick start. And we need to create a LangGraph application with an agents file and the requirements. And we need to supply a LangGraph.json. 
So here you can see the example land graph graph that we are going to use for this example. Now notice the compiled graph is stored in the graph variable here. All right. So in the requirement.txt, we are writing what dependencies do we need our graph to run with. And if we are using poetry, so we can also note it in, and write it in a tomo file. Now notice that in the directory structure, we need to have a langgraph.json file. So this file is going to hold information and metadata on our LangGraph application. The first is going to be where our dependencies files are going to be located. So this dot here that it's going to be stored in the root directory. And in our graphs entry, we can have multiple graph compiled graphs here. We need to list the name of the graph that we're going to call it. And in the value, we're going to have the path to the Python file, which has the implementation of the compiled graph and the name of the variable of the graph stored. So in this use case, we can see that we called our compiled graph and we stored it in the graph variable. And at the end, we want to specify the .env file that we're storing all of our environment variables and secrets. And to run this locally, we would need to run with the CLI command langgraph app dash C langgraph .json. And of course, we need to have Docker running in order to run this. And I forgot we also need to install the LangGraph CLI. Anyways, after we'll do that, then it's going to spin up a container with LangServe of a REST API ready um, to work with. And that is actually making our graph accessible via HTTP. So this is for local testing, but if you want, we can go for the managed part and the process is pretty much the same. However, now we need to go to the Langsmith UI, click the rocket icon, and then in the UI, we can see we need to connect our GitHub repository, which all of our code, our LangGraph code is stored in, and we need to connect it with Langsmith. So after we do that, we choose the branch that we want to deploy. So usually it's going to be main. And we can also add environment variables. And here we can also save them as secrets. So those are going to be stored as secrets in the LangGraph Clouds um, service. So probably they're going to use something like HashiCorp or Google Cloud um, Secrets Manager, etc. cetera, uh, depending where it's running. And that's pretty much it. So we now have access to environment variables in secrets that's going to be cloud hosted. All right, so once we plug in all of the API keys, environment variables, then we simply need to click on submit. And then LangGraph Cloud is going to take our code from the main branch and it's going to deploy it. And at the end, we are going to have a URL which we can reference and make HTTP requests and integrate it with a frontend. So obviously, it's all going to be heavily monitored with Langsmith, which is nice. Cool. So just to conclude, I'm very excited of this new service and I think LangGraph Cloud is going to be big and I think it solves real pain points and it offers a very compelling value proposition.